Today's video is brought to you by Pro Technologies. Contact them at www.protechnologies.com or sales at protechnologies.com for all of your custom battery needs. So now that we've picked our type of chipset, now we need to look at the features of our chipset. What features of our type of chipset do we need to look for? Now I've already said we're going to be using the BQ77915 in our application, but what made me pick that over the other offerings from Texas Instruments? What made me go down the path to pick that specific chipset? So I'm gonna go through the things that I make sure to have when designing a BMS, the safety features that I want whenever uh, I'm trying to make a safe battery pack and the features that you should look for uh, whenever you are designing a BMS as well. The very first feature that I always look at in a BMS chipset is OCD or overcurrent in discharge. Now, this trip point setting is for the max load current of the battery pack. It ensures that the battery pack can only deliver the current that it was designed for. So let's say you designed the uh, battery pack for 11 amps and then you set your OCD trip limit to 12 amps. Well, if the load tries to draw 12 amps from it, then the chipset will uh, cut the output off and isolate the battery from the system because the system tried to abuse uh, the battery pack. Uh, too much discharge can cause overheating and what we say, fire and disassembly. Um, so you want to make sure that your OCD uh, trip points are set correctly. You want to make sure your BMS has overcurrent in discharge. Now, sometimes uh, your BMSs have uh, two different settings, overcurrent discharge one and overcurrent in discharge two. If we look at our data sheet uh, for our 77915, we see that there are two trip limits, OCD one and OCD two. Uh, the reason you would do this is if you have pulses. So let's say uh, you set your OCD one trip point to 15 amps at five seconds. So if there is 15 amps being drawn from the battery for more than five seconds, uh, the output will cut off. However, you need to have a 30 amp pulse for one and a half seconds. So your OCD two trip point would be 30 amps at two seconds. So you could draw up to 30 amps for two seconds. If you draw more than 30 amps for two seconds, it will trip first before your OCD one trip. So that's uh, a good feature that a lot of these chipsets have. Both your smart chipsets and your analog front ends a lot of times have these uh, features as well. You have multi levels of overcurrent and discharge flags in order to uh, have greater pulse capability and greater granularity uh, for controlling the load of your system. The second feature to look for is like overcurrent and discharge, except it is overcurrent in charge. Now this is important because some battery protectors do not offer protection with current flowing both ways. So that is very important to look for. You want overcurrent in discharge and overcurrent in charge, current going both directions into your battery pack. Uh, the problem with this is if you have a rogue charger. So let's say you have uh, a charger that um, is outputting way more voltage and way more current than it needs to. And so instead of having a current limit of three amps, which is what your cell can take, it now is outputting six amps at the same voltage. So now your battery pack's just taking six amps in instead of three amps and your BMS heats up, the cells can't take it anymore, you have venting and possible fire and disassembly. So you wanna make sure that your chipset has overcurrent in charge, just like overcurrent in discharge. Again, current in both directions to ensure maximum safety of your battery pack. Now the third feature I always look for is temperature. Now uh, there are several different types of temperatures that you can uh, get with these chipsets. Uh, sometimes there's only one type of temperature. It just monitors the temperature and whenever it gets out of range, it cuts off the battery pack no matter what the situation is. However, if we look at the data sheet for the 77915, we can see that it has four different temperature settings. So why would you need four different temperature settings? Well, let's look at the first one, OTD or over temperature in discharge. 
uh, this is normally higher than the other ones because your discharge current normally is going to be greater than your charge current. And if you have high current flowing, your cells in your BMS are going to heat up. They may not heat up outside of what the safety levels are, but they're going to heat up because of the impedance of the FETs and of the wire and of the board itself. So you don't want your BMS tripping prematurely just because the board heated up 15 or 20 degrees over whatever ambient was. So over temperature in discharge uh, is very important to have if you want that granularity. The same with OTC or over temperature in charge. Over temperature in charge is current going the other direction. This is normally lower uh, than your over temperature in discharge because your charge current is normally much lower than your discharge current. Now, some of them have a feature like this chipset does is under temperature in discharge. So if the battery pack is too cold, it will not allow the BMS to discharge. Now, some of your smart chipsets have a feature to where it will um, ask uh, uh, the device or ask a charger to limit the current during under temperature. Uh, this chipset also has under temperature in charge. So if the battery pack is too cold, again, it won't let it be charged. So sometimes in, if you have a smart charger and a smart battery pack, uh, your under temperature in charge, you can put your battery pack on the charger and the charger will uh, let a little bit of current flow in order to warm the battery up. That is a, a little feature sometimes, uh, but uh, temperature is very important. You want to at least have some temperature setting. Uh, so whether you have a, a thermal breaker on the battery pack or you have uh, um, a temperature setting on the BMS chipset itself, you really want to monitor temperature because that is uh, one of the crucial safety things, especially if you have a rogue cell that's gone high impedance and it's getting hotter than the others and it has the possibility of going into thermal runaway. And again, if a battery pack gets too hot, uh, fire and disassembly. That is the theme of all these features is fire and disassembly. Now the last and probably the most important one that I always look at is the short circuit protection. Now if we look at the 77915 data sheet, it says SCD or short circuit in discharge. Now this is a very important feature because if the output of your battery pack is shorted, uh, then it has the potential to heat rapidly uh, for the cells to start venting, uh, for the cells to possibly catch fire and then disassemble and you have a really bad problem. Also, short circuit arcs can be sometimes hundreds of amps. So in order to demonstrate this for you, I'm going to take this four series, six parallel lithium iron phosphate pack. I'm going to put some wires on it and I'm going to short circuit it to show you what a short circuit is capable of. Now, these cells individually are capable of 80 amps a piece. And if they're six in parallel, that is 480 DC amps per short circuit. So let me show you exactly what's going to happen when a big battery like pack like this short circuits. All right, so we are out in the parking lot with our battery pack because my boss says that burning down the lab is not an appropriate use of company assets. So we're out here in the parking lot of Pro Technologies and we are going to short this battery pack out and show you what it can do. So what I've done here is I've stripped the wires back and I'm going to take and knock them together. I'm gonna to show you what the arcs uh, can do. And I want you to think about when you see these things, what this could do in your product. So again, no safety. Do not try this at home. Okay. I am, I ain't even professional enough to do this. This is stupid, but I'm going to do it anyway, but this is purely stupid. So do not try this ever. I'm just telling you, don't do it ever. All right, here we go. See that right there? Oh, you see the smoke coming out of the pack? You see that? The cells are venting. Oh, oh, did you see a little bit of fire right there? See that? Oh, oh, we got some fire. You see the fire? Who sees the fire? Woo, we got some fire. <sighs> and so uh, what happened there was this cell in the front, this, well, I mean, this tab in the front got so hot that it lit the insulator on fire. So the, the cells didn't catch on fire, but it got hot enough to light the insulator on fire. So if this was just a dead short, this insulator would catch fire and then catch your system on fire. And then you would have just a super bad day. So let me go throw this in the, uh, in the safety bin, and then we'll get back to the rest of the video. 
Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learn a lot about BMS chipsets, the features you need to look for, the different types of chipsets. Now, in the next video, in part four, I plan to start setting up the BQ77915. Now, there are a lot of things to consider when setting up a BMS. We have to pick our output FETs. Uh, we have to pick what kind of fuse we want, what kind of current sense resistor do we need with the uh, overcurrent and charge and discharge millivolt trip points for the SKU of 77915 that we pick. There are a lot of considerations when you go to actually use the chipset on a design. So in the next video, that's what we will be doing. We will be creating the schematic, hopefully, uh, for that chipset as well. So make sure you subscribe and put the bell on so you receive the notification next time I post a BMS design video. Thank you everyone so much for watching. Uh, be sure to like and share this video as well. Also, check me out on LinkedIn, Alex Norman, link in the description below. Best LinkedIn profile there is. And I will see everyone in the next video.